Hello, uh, my name is Daniel Coyle, teaching the flame working class here at Corning Studios. I'm known for making monkeys. Um, this is a project that me and uh, Saiyan Glass are working on right now. Um, but I'm not going to demonstrate the monkey head. If you look, the eyes are actually a Murini. And so these are an example of this Murini. And this is what I'm going to demonstrate today is how to make a glass eye Murini. So, um, so what I like to do is I, ga I already gathered the black onto, I believe this is 12 millimeter uh, rod, and I, I like try to gather it in a way that I can use the rod to make it symmetrical. And so this will be the pupil. And the colors I'm gonna use are, this is Roswell. I'm gonna start with Roswell, this will be a green eye. And just like any, any piece of glass you make, you're going to want to clean the tip off. And this is like a, a color that you might need a more oxidized flame for. And so with Mirini, I'm going to, I'm going to be striping the glass on, building it up slowly. Um, but there's a method where if you, if you stripe it going at this angle, you can get a thinner piece of glass, a thinner layer. If you stripe it just horizontal, it's thicker, and then if you stripe it this way, it applies more thicker. But since it's the beginning of the Murini, I'm going to try to apply a thin layer. And the most important part is to make sure that what you're applying to is cold, and you want the glass to be really warm when you're applying it. Oh, one second, I need to... This was in the kiln. Anytime you put something in the kiln, you want to make sure to wipe off all the kiln dust. So I make a thin line, I wait, and then I will go right next to that line, apply another thin stripe, wait. The reason why I wait is I don't want this black iris, or pupil I mean, to, uh, to be warm at all, because when you apply this color to like a warm base, it'll, it'll dig into the glass. And just like I showed you guys with the overlay, it's, I'm not necessarily striping this down, I'm bringing this piece up into the flame. Striping it. And I just missed a spot there, but I'll go back to that later. That will happen sometimes. And this is the basis for a lot of picture cane, the fr Francini style Murinis. It's, it's all built with this striping technique building shapes, striping on glass, and making sure that what you're striping onto is not warm enough to dig the color into. And I just missed a couple other spots, but it's okay. If you look, there's this little gap right here. I wanna assess that before I go to melt it in. And the way you do that is just by adding a little bit more glass to it. And I missed a little spot right here. And then now that I have a layer around, it's not the most even, but I can melt it in and, uh, and roll it flat. And so I'll get the surface pretty warm and then go right away to my marver. And I'm kind of letting the glass cool down and I'm just trying to heat that surface layer of color that I just applied so as not to mash that into my, my uh, pupil. Does anybody have any questions?
Dan, have you ever heard of flame work before? No interest? Oh, yeah. Yeah? No time. No time, no time. Shout out to the digital media team here at Corning. They do a great job. I, I watch a lot of the videos that you guys put up. It's like, it's really awesome, you know, that you can, you can be somewhere else in the world and be checking out what's happening here. And so now that I got it all pushed in and melted in, I'm going to make sure it's a nice, smooth, round surface. Because whatever you're applying to, to this, like if, if I make this an oval now, when I stripe all the color, it's going to keep going more and more oval. And that's kind of why I started by using this rod as a base, so I can really make sure it's cylindrical and round. Okay, so the next color that I use, this is timber. <clears throat> and with, with these, these eye murines and pretty much any type of murini, it's like the two ends aren't the most clean. The very middle portion is going to be your best portion. And remember how I said hold it at this angle for a thin stripe. Now I'm going to hold it more horizontally for a thicker color application. One stripe, I still want to let it cool in between the stripes. And for a murini, I like to build it almost next to the first stripe and keep going all the way around instead of like when I showed you guys the overlay, how I'll go to like four points and keep filling it in. And this just like helps me maintain an even uh, layer of glass. Cause it's almost like I'm building up on that first line, almost like I'm building a wall around it. And I learned this, uh, I took, I learned this, this Murini technique from Lauren Stump. I took a class with him a long time ago. And uh, I don't know if you guys have seen his flame work pieces in the back there. They're just incredible. He does a lot of sculpture and he does some of the best Murini. You just gotta go slow, make sure to have it cool. And like I said, you guys can build these on a smaller scale than this. You just start with a smaller pupil. Um, and you can even pull the, the rod from seven mil down to like four millimeter rod. And I know some people even incorporate frit in, in between layers. More, more likely powder than, than frits, but more um I would say probably eight millimeter maybe ten sometimes going small is, is a little harder but you just have to really make sure to keep the keep the base layer that you're adding to like cold and and stripe quickly and it, it'll build up uh, very quickly on you too. It'll get big, bigger and bigger. Just melting it in. Trying to push push the outside layer of glass to make it even.
Um, a, a little bit. It's it's a, honestly just a, a nice uh, oxidized flame for working like cadmium colors. Okay, I'll I'll do a layer of gray next. And I don't want this layer to be too thick. I want more green in the eye, but I just like to put a little layer of gray. I thought they looked good together. This is Portland gray. And so, like I said, I'm going to try to put a thinner layer. So I'm going to apply it at this sort of angle instead of, instead of like at this angle. And last time I was here, Rocco was my TA and he made, he did this demonstration. He did a really good job. Uh, he did a brown eye with some hand mixed colors. And this is just an important uh, piece for my work for the eyes. Most, most of my eyes I use Murini and even though this takes a little bit of time, normally at home I would build them a little bigger, and, but it would be enough material to last me months once it's pulled down. And just always be aware to not have your base too warm. Sometimes you can get in the zone and you know, I just had to remind myself to slow down. Because glass, you can't force it, you can't rush it. You have to crush it, don't rush it. So even though the ends are gonna look a little uh, off because that's where the tips of the color kind of folded over, I'm still looking at that gauging how much color would be around the pupil. And also because I made it on this rod, this, uh, this is 12 millimeter rod, I can, kinda, I can kinda see how much thicker it is from that rod for my, my iris. And you can, you can put a bigger iris, a skinnier iris. It'll just make the pupil either look uh, like beady-eyed or di more dilated. And so at this point, you see how it's getting a little hot and it's flopping on me? Um, there's a point with Murini building where you're going to need to switch the handle up. But before I do that, I'm going to put a, a cap on this one end. But before I cap it, I want to make sure it's nice and cylindrical, nice and round, looking down the barrel. And then I'll, I'll actually flatten this side. You don't necessarily have to do this, it's just my preference.
And there, you can see it's pretty, pretty round. I always clean off the end of my glass. Um, and honestly, I'll show you how to cap it. I usually use a smaller rod, depending on the diameter of the glass, so I'll use a smaller rod. And so what I do is it's almost like uh, I'm, I'm like spinning the glass and applying it around the entire edge until it's all coated all the way around. Try not to get the Murini too hot. And once I get a layer around it, I try to fill in that center portion. And there's a few that you can, you can literally just like build up moils out of clear if you want, but this method works if you're doing a complex build and you have components that aren't symmetrically round. Um, for instance, if you had a triangle or something, just coating the edge first and filling it in helps get you a nice moil on there. It doesn't matter if there's some air trapped in it. Um, the ends are usually not the best part of the Murini anyways, especially the very end. Marina. So now I'll have a nice stable um, handle on the other side when I need to melt in the next layers that I apply. I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah, it would just be flopping around. If I kept trying to add glass to that, um, eventually it, it, I wouldn't be able to melt it in without putting a handle on one side of it. And even if you're going bigger, making bigger and bigger Murini, um, like you might have to re-handle or re-moil up a couple times because eventually if this, if this mask gets so big that this handle starts flopping, you, you might even need to transfer it to a bigger piece, um, a, a new moil every time. Okay, so this is my, it's my pupil with an iris around it, and then I, I will coat it with star white next. Um, just one second. It's important to stay hydrated. And then with the star white, I don't really want this, this uh, oxidized flame. It might boil quite a bit. Where are we at? Oh, cool, I got time. All right, so I want a, a thicker layer of, of white, so now I'm going to apply it going this way.
holding that rod at this uh, more cute angle. Um, I normally would, would uh, if it got to the point where it was too, too big, I would pull it down to a more manageable bar size and let that cool and cut that up and then, and then pull those down. But yes, there is a limit to what I really would want to, I, I think 70 millimeters. Sometimes it can get bigger, but once it gets to like 90 millimeters, 100 millimeters diameter solid, it just takes so long for the glass to get even hot. Um, like the, that last picture cane that I showed you, the, the two-faced monkey, that got a little out of hand and it took an hour and a half just to get enough heat into it to stretch it a tiny bit of like a big torch just raging on it. And at that point, it's really hot. You get all this heat blasting at you. It's the only time I've ever gotten a welder's burn is when I was working on a a large marini where your eyes like get really burned you can't even open them the next day end up doing one more coat of white around it but um, so now that I have a layer of white it's not too necessary for me to um, to really melt it in smoothly because it's just more white going on top but I want to put dots so that I know where I start and end so that's where I start and this is where I start so that now I can go around the whole thing and those are little reference dots so I know when I made it all the way around. Um, no, the, the entire time that I've been doing it, I've been doing the stripes uh, right next to each other. And that's because I like to, it's like I, I won't mess up the thickness of the glass if I keep just building it up next to each other. Um, it's harder to see here because I just put this layer of white around. Um, but but when, I do the, when I showed you the overlay where I, I put a stripe on and then I stripe on the opposite side and then stripe you know do it in quarters and then fill it in from there it's kind of hard to maintain an even stripeness or uh even layer i guess whereas when i stripe right next to each other i'm, I'm kind of know what i'm building onto it's almost like i'm building a wall around it and you can do do that when you do an overlay it's just you're gonna have to let the tubing or whatever you're applying the overlay to cool down in between each stripe and that's why i go opposite when i do an overlay to do a color prep that's why i do one stripe go the opposite way um, is to kind of let the tubing cool down where i where i just applied a stripe does that make any sense sweet yeah
Yeah, it gives it a chance for the for the material to cool down between each stripe doing it that way. And see, because I have those reference dots, now I know I'm coming back around to where I started. And um, this might be the final stripe. But before I melt this in, I'm actually going to look down the barrel of it. Because sometimes you can see if there's a little valley, if you miss a spot, or if there's a high spot. And I think I missed a little spot here, but it's not really that much material. And... Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. I think we'll roll with that. Actually, wait, I see a little, I see one high spot. And so if there's a high spot, you can literally just take, just heat it up and swipe it, swipe it off. Pardon? I usually do two layers. Um, I, it, it all depends. Each Murini can be different. Um, I, I usually do two layers, but it depends on how big the iris is. Because <clears throat> um, you can just like look at it on the ends too and see. Um, but I definitely want like a, a nice layer of white around it. And uh, I think I have these Murinis out. Maybe I put them away. Oh, wait, they're right here. But you can see on these ones. Um, how much white is like uh, the proportion to white to wh like how much is on there uh, compared to the iris? Is there a kind of ratio to diameter of the stick and length of the building? There, there is a there there isn't a ratio, but when I build Murini, I try to only go about two inches, no longer than two inches in length. And it's kind of like you don't want it any longer than your paddle because uh, you can kind of lose it. Um, and when you stripe really long lines, um, the thickness of the line can change. So I, I'd say two inches long, maybe two and a half. Um, I was building that last one three inches long, like the last big component one, three inches long. And that was like a little bit too, too long. Like the ends of my stripes were getting really thin and inconsistent compared to where I started from. So yeah, I'd say about two inches. We're getting closer. Just want to make sure that this is nice and round. And I think this is an important part of uh, of my work is the the actual eye Murini. It really, you know, it's like once you put like an eye that looks realistic on a piece, it kind of changes the way it looks comparatively. Um, people connect with it more, I think. Like you saw yesterday when I was demoing the monkey head, as soon as I put the eyes in, it changed the way it looked like greatly. Um, So I'm looking at this. Um, I would normally want to melt this in, but I can see that these stripes are beyond where I added that cap. So I know that where it was melted, like about like three millimeters up, that's where the actual color starts. So I'm not going to worry about that yet. Um, what I do with all my Murini or my eye Murini is I do a thin skim coat of clear on it. Yeah, so protect the color because um, white really wants to boil and get burnt out. And so um, I showed you guys how I lens it, like with the way that I lens it, the whole eyeball is encased in clear, even if it's just a very skinny, thin layer of clear, protects mainly the white, but any other colors. Actually, 
So I just cut, this is six millimeter rod. I cut it in half. Just gonna try to wipe it real quick. I don't wanna hit your camera. Yep, six millimeter. Six millimeters. So with the skim layer, I am gonna I am gonna do it like I showed you guys how to do the uh, overlay, where I'll go to, go to each side and then do quarters. But I will also um, build off of those quarters um, to the left hand side, like I've been doing. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is so that I don't have to wait for the the base layer to cool down because this is just the clear so now it's like I can go to each quarter of this and go to the left of it and eat. it should be cool enough for me to stripe this clear on top of it You want to be very careful when you do these too, because you can, I've jammed glass in my torch before, which is never very fun to do. Okay, that's fully encased and clear. Have you ever made a Murini, Jose? No, I have not. You just, no go. Nope, there's no clear or transparent color in the Murini, just the, just, uh, the clear is on the outside. Not to say that you can't use transparent colors, it's just I've never really tried it. Um, and you see it's, it's quite a bit of work, quite a bit of color. Um, I guess I suppose I could do a test little, little one to see how it would look. Um, would you grab me some more like eight mil or this size if there is some in there? So that's what we got. It doesn't look like much now, but we're getting close to pulling it down. And then I'll cut it in half. We can see if I did a good job or not. Yeah. And this is like kind of the junky end. So it's not really hard. So a lot of times when I'm looking down at it, I'm just looking down to make sure that it's round and symmetrical. Uh, 
Um, I would say getting it too hot and striping color into the base when it's too hot. Um, if you imagine you're looking down the center of it, if it's too hot and you dig in color to it, it's gonna change. Cause it's like the, thanks bud. It's like the taffy. Were you talking about that? The saltwater taffy or some, or not the candy cane or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, who the, who the hell was telling me about that? Oh, that was you. Yeah, it's like similar to that. It's like we're making a loaf of bread and, and each slice of the bread is gonna be an image if that's a good way to think about it. And so when you're, when you're building, you have to think about uh, the way it's gonna look from the center out. So now I'm gonna cap this again. So for for a muni like this, you could you could literally just wad up some clear, make a nice cap. But I just wanted to show you guys this method because we've been doing the over or the rollover tech, and um, this is a little bit similar. You know, you're spinning the glass, you're trying to just gather it onto itself. be enough. A nice seal on that. And whatever shape the moil is, is that's how the muni is going to pull. So I'll really make sure that that's a cylindrical shape. And then before I pull it down, I'm going to actually gather this other side up and clean it up. Because like I said, the murini will follow whatever whatever either side is, is, uh, is like. So I want to clean this up now. Sorry, I felt like I was blocking you. Don't be blocking you or don't be sorry. <laughs> don't be blocking me. I'm just I'm pushing a lot of this uh, handle that I'm holding 
into it to try to just get rid of this uh, or melt in this like junky end right here. Okay, look at that. Saw a little bit of stress right here. And this uh, pertains to like most stuff, but Murini especially, because you're gonna be pulling it, putting tension on it. You don't wanna, ha you wanna have nice connections. You don't want, the handle to break um, and you just want to take the extra time to make it nice each handle is on there solid and now I'll, I'll get ready for the final pull down this side is pretty warm so I'm going to start heating from the back side if you will The clear is going to want to pull before all this color, but I, I'm, I'm going to try to get heat soaked into all the color first and then let it cool down for a second. And um, as glass is cooling down, the heat's dissipating out of it, but it's also dissipating inside of it and making it an even heat base with anything really thick. Okay, I feel like that side just got as hot as the other one. And you see my torch face now, I'm like, <clears throat> I'm trying to focus the heat and splash it away from my moil on this side. And you'll see me do that same thing. Back and forth. And now I'm just gonna let it cool for a second. Like I said, the heat's dissipating away from the glass, but it's also going to the center of the mass as well. You don't want to pull too soon. You want to make sure that there's a nice, even heat base like all the way through the core of the, of the glass. You want a wicked good core heat. You're fine. All right, and then I might just do that one more time and you're gonna see me push and pull on it and that's not to do anything but for me to feel if the center is hot yet. Oh yeah, that's that's nice and juicy. Oh yeah. So I don't wanna get like two, two big like dog bone ends. So now that I know there's heat base in the center, I'm gonna try to heat, heat these moil ends more. And it's like, you wanna just pull it out slowly. I'm like not really pulling. I'm almost just letting gravity do the trick. Not trying to not let the glass spin, even though it did a little bit. <laughs> Slowly. And the center part is going to be our, our nice part of the Murini. Marine. Okay. Just let the glass do its thing at first. And then I'll pull a little bit faster, a little bit faster. You don't want to go too quickly. You just got to let the glass do its thing. It's going to get skinnier and skinnier. I'm going to go for about five to seven millimeter. Just so everybody has enough to try to use. At the end, you really need to tug on it. Yeah. 
This is why you want to make sure they're melted in. And then you can pull the ends out more, but I like to just wait until this cools down. I'll chop this off and then I will, I can pull those ends down later. I, I'll put them in the kiln. Um, can you grab this side? I'm just gonna nip, nip it in the center so you get a good grip on it. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, that's pretty good. So all that for this little, it's hard. Can you focus on that? Yeah, it's kind of small. Um, if there's time, I can, I'll encase a piece. I'll show you how to implode it up. I just have to let this, oh, there we go. Would you guys like to see these? Yeah, you can uh, pass it around and we'll, we'll throw it in the kiln. Um, and I will encase one real quick so we can see it better on the video. <clears throat> and I'm gonna show you guys how to implode these, uh, like encase them so like they'll get bigger. Cause this is a little smaller diameter, but you can make this double the size if you wanted to. Yeah, if there's space for it, or maybe Jose can figure out where where's a nice spot for it in there. If we need to, we can tr trim off more of it. All right, so I just tagged it on there. I should have been explaining that. I grabbed the Murini, tagged it on, kind of pinched it on center, and then I rolled it in my Elmarver um, to make sure it was all cylindrical. I fire polished the front. You don't really want to move that at all. Um, and then I will encase it. And remember how like the last one I showed you guys, I just did a, like a small dollop and I pulled most of it off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put on at least this much, whatever the mirror is, I'm going to put in like that much glass or a little bit more of clear on top. We'll see how far we can implode this one. So we got that on there. might be a little bit much. I'm gonna take some of it off. And so, like I was telling you guys before, I'm gonna superheat the front, bring the heat around, but as I'm bringing the heat to the side, I'm gonna tilt this up, because glass moves with heat and gravity. So I'm coming at this angle, my, my glass is level. Once I'm getting this tip of like the, the clear lens hot, I'll bring the heat around and drop to the sides, and then I'll let it cool. I'll do this about three or four times. Come in this way, superheat the lens, turn the heat, bring it around the side and drop with gravity. And slowly it will start imploding into itself and, and uh, getting bigger. You can do this with like picture cane. If you only have a, a skinny chunk, you can implode it to make it uh, bigger. And as you can see, it's like starting to uh, round out on the inside. If you look at human eye or any, any eyes, it's not just a piece of clear flat and then a lens. It's like the lens is like, uh, like it's like a hemisphere around your iris, around your whole eye. So probably one more time. Getting the heat in there, bringing it with gravity around. Okay, one more time. <laughs> Slowly, it's gonna happen where it's gonna look like there's like barely any clear on top of that. And it just like doubled the size of the Murini. So you can see now like it doesn't really look like there's that much clear on it. Well, it's kind of hard to see from back there. And then hopefully I didn't mess it up. And there's, I don't know if you can see it from down there. Yeah, it's not my best work, but you know, I was a little nervous, so. Um, but this is usable eye cane. And the colors will change to these, these vibrant greens. So, 
Thanks for joining us.